So usually when we're putting in a button, we'll have a single button like this one. And it needs two pins to work. It needs to connect one side to the ground pin on your um, Arduino Micro or other microcontroller and the other to an input pin. And you can add as many buttons as you like. Uh, each one will share the same ground, but you need an additional input pin for each one. With the Pro Micro, we've got 16 input pins available. It gives you a maximum of 16 buttons. What if you want more? That's when we need the button matrix. So instead of having a maximum of 16, we're going to put in 25, which is well within the amount that we can actually have. We could have more than this, but this is as most as I could be bothered building. And so what we could do now is instead of having one pin for each, we have column and row pins. One pin for each column, one pin for each row. And we connect the pin columns like this. And we connect the rows like this. Let me take a moment to explain how this will actually work. We activate just one of the column pins and then one after the other, we check row one, then row two, then row three, then row four, then row five, one at a time basically, and check every button in that row to see if it's on or off. And then we grab the pin, sorry, then we deactivate the first column, activate the second column, go through all the row pins again. Do the third column, check all the rows. Do the fourth, all the rows. Do the fifth column, all the rows. So we check sort of one column, one row at a time. And there's one other thing we need to add to this schematic before we run away. And because there's a little bit of a problem where the electricity, once we put it through one switch, it bleeds through to the others and leads to something called ghosting, where we push one button and more in the column end up coming on. So what we need to do on each of these row pins is actually put a little diode there as well, just pointing out towards the row pin just like that. And that's it. That's the entire schematic for one of our matrices. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and make one. So first I'm grabbing a circuit board, just spacing out some switches. Now I'm making this with all surface mount parts. Now you probably wouldn't actually make a board like this, but um, if I do it all surface mount and have everything on one side, you'll be able to see what I'm doing a bit better. So this is just a little test run. Now I'm going to make the whole thing here. So feel free to sit and watch. Or ask, go ahead and skip to the end if you like. So those are my switches, uh, black things are the diodes, and we're getting a production line going now, just one switch at a time. Now all together to um, make this board probably took me about an hour. But it's pretty relaxing, you know, once you've worked out exactly how you're going to make it. Play some music, watch some cartoons. And just try not to burn your hands as you go. So that's my 5x5 five five grid laid out. Now I just have to, um, I'm doing one side of the diodes first. And you'll see those diodes down the left were a little bit squished. I did actually not plan that very well. I should have moved everything across by maybe just one pad, but that happens. At least it happens to me. That's all the buttons down, so now I'm just going to put a little blob of solder on each of the other ends of the diode that I skipped before. Alright, now I've just got some stripped wire. I don't know how well it shows up on the video there. And that's going to run all the way across my diodes. So these are my row wires. And you'll see I'm making them a little bit extra long and soldering them down to that pad a few pads away because that's where I'm going to connect my rows all together at the end. So that's all the rows done. I'm showing the camera here, but I really should have focused because it doesn't make it any easier to see. If anything, it's a bit harder to see it like that. 
and get a close up look at my awesome soldering. So now for the columns, because these have to leapfrog, we're going to actually just cut a whole bunch of little wires. And this is probably one of the more annoying parts of the whole process. All right, now just one at a time. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra solder there to those pins, just to make it easier to stick these guys on. Now I don't have to hold the solder wire as I do this. There we go. Now just solder one side of the wire at a time. And the reason I do one at a time is just because I don't have a very good angle to get the other side in. So I'll do them all from this comfortable position, rotate it around, and then get the other side like that. All right, now I'm going to make some little connectors on the end, and this is where I'll actually connect to my board. So this is just a little test run. I'm just going to put them up the corner, solder them on, and now I'm just fixing my row pins to that row of five. Measure out some new wires. So once again, this isn't a board you'd actually do for production or for even comfort of playing with. But it shows you how the schematic should work and how they should wire together. These buttons could be any kind of buttons. They could be keyboard keys. They could be press buttons like on my joysticks. You could probably even do something like this with the hat keys to save yourself extra pins. That's all my columns done. And now we can look at how to connect it to the Pro Micro. So I'm just going to connect it with jumper wires. Normally you'd be soldering this, but this is just a demonstration. And it's going to be my little test rig. So these are my column wires I'm plugging in, just exactly according to the schematic we had at the start. And you'll see I ran out of nice short wires there, so I'm using these Frankensteinian abominations. And now that's connected, let's plug it in. Now I've already got my firmware connected on this and you'll see when I open up the configurator, all the inputs, they're all going nuts. So we press the button matrix button. And what we do is we set these columns and rows. So I've set the row to D8 and the column to D9. Sorry about that little jump in the cut there, by the way. And you'll see those two buttons are working now. So I click that drop down. Now I just realized the drop down is not actually appearing in the video here, so I apologize for that. But as I'm clicking these columns, there's a drop down appearing from which I can select which pin is assigned to that column. And you'll see that whole row is working now. So to get the next row working, I just have to assign that next row pin from my invisible drop down. And you'll see he's working now as well. Grab the next one. And the next, and the next, and now you can see we've got our full 25 buttons working. Now they're not actually assigned to anything yet, so the operating system isn't going to pick them up as any kind of command. Until I go and assign all these buttons here. And once again, we're not seeing the drop down here. So when you click these buttons, you're getting a full list of all the different buttons you can choose from a 1 to 128. Uh, you can also assign a hat switch inputs to this as well, your north, south, east, west. But we've got 25 buttons, so I'm going to assign them buttons 1 through 25.
There we go, and now in the USB tester you can see all buttons are working happily now. So I'm going to make sure I commit those changes to the EEPROM so they're kept after I um, power cycle. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give this one an address of 1. So once you change the address from 0, it's not going to talk to the operating system anymore. But you need to change it to something else because this is going to be a secondary device. I'm going to have this plugged into a joystick and the joystick will be my main device at 0 which will get all the inputs from this one and pass them on to the operating system for me. So I'm just plugging in a little 4-pin aircraft plug that I've got on some jumper wires here. So that plugs into my joystick base. I connect my USB cable there. And you'll see that's powering my button matrix. Whoops. And I open up the configurator and you can see now I've got my beige base. It's got the X and Y axes assigned there. They're not calibrated. And from this invisible drop down box, I'm going to choose the button matrix and you can see it's still got all its settings. And if I push the buttons, whoops, I've got to choose Got to actually highlight the um, USB tester first. And you can see it's getting all the inputs. So that's it. I've got my joystick with attached button box. And it's simple as that. So you can go in and um, change those whenever you like. Or you can put a stick on this as well, it would be nice too. But I'm going to sit there and calibrate this for now. But I'm going to leave you guys now. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope the software works well for you. Make sure you tell me about all the cool things you make with it.